Do you want this? Have a look at it. If I don't do it, I'm only doing it for one reason because I'm being a bitch. Because there is no, there is zero potential of injury, zero. All the benefits, and all you're avoiding is discomfort. Now, if that is not a definition of you, you're being a little bitch. That's that's it. So as a result, when I when it crosses my mind, I can't talk myself out of it. Hello, friends. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Main Idea Podcast, where today I have the pleasure of sitting down once again with Dayan Kayich. A quick shout out to the sponsors of the show, which you can see behind me, Bugs Naturals and AG1. These are both staples in my daily health and wellness regimen. And if you want a discount on either of them, check the show notes, support the show, and upgrade your health. If you want to see this podcast grow in 2024, please take 30 seconds, it is so easy, and leave a five-star review on Spotify. This helps the show get discovered organically and helps me continually reach out to amazing guests to bring on the show. The other way that you can support this is by sharing an episode with someone that loves jujitsu, martial arts, strength training, and human performance. It's very easy. Just send them your favorite episode and let them become part of the community. You can also support the show at mainideapodcast.com, where you can join the mailing list and stay up to date on all things the Main Idea Podcast, including merchandise drops and the book club. Dayon is a professional mixed martial artist and jiu-jitsu black belt from Universal MMA in Vancouver, British Columbia. He is on an eight-fight win streak and just won his last bout this past weekend on February 2nd in the Samurai MMA promotion in Montreal. I hope that you enjoy this episode as much as I did. Dayan is a wealth of information and insight. His mindset is contagious, and he's someone that I always look forward to talking to on this show. Without further ado, Dayan Kayach. Well, Dayan, welcome back. Round two of the show. You just went three rounds in a fight that came out victorious. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be here, man. I've been really excited to chat about this. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the invite, man. So I was uh, watching this weekend uh, up in a cabin near Lake Tahoe going on a ski trip with some friends Yeah. and saw a war for sure. How did you feel at the end of that fight? Exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah. I don't know if you watched the fight. Um, after the fight was over, I, I just sat down. Like I, I, I was running... Yeah fumes some fumes um but whatever it doesn't matter no um like i told people you can't beat me on my worst day and that was my worst day what do you think lent itself to that being uh a tough fight in terms of the gas tank because well, you're a very conditioned person you're training all the time mm -hmm. you're a you say yes to you know anyone wants to fight you're you say where do i sign so what was it about the camp that well, was everything challenging? um like first of all like you know like nine or ten days out i lost uh ramsey the original yep. guy that I was supposed to compete against because he got he went to the Ultimate Fighter, um, which understood I would do the same thing, um, right. you know. And then they found me another guy. Maybe yes, no, no. He couldn't do it and he couldn't get his work done. So I said maybe we'll put him a week later to BFL. Um, mm -hmm. I called Jay. We're like let's make that happen, and it did. That didn't happen. They found me another guy. It was a ten and four. Um, and then he's like, yes, but let me figure out some, if I get my time off work, if I can make that happen. So that didn't happen. And by now I'm like, you know, it's a miracle. They're going to find a fourth guy, but miraculously they did, but I was always assuming it's going to be a weight up. Um, I didn't think it was going to go way down. Right. So, um, but you know, by then I'm like, well, I'm not fighting nothing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We'll find you a guy. He's got more fights than you really experienced. Uh, but he's got to be a 170. And I stepped on the scale. I was 194.8. <laughs> Right. Oh, uh, no. So then, um, Brutal. yeah. And then after, you know, but whatever it is, listen, we, we, we all have issues to, to make it. And after that, um, I said, yes. And I started dieting down and everything. And, the, the, and then on Tuesday, and then I didn't get any medicals done because, you know, I don't know if I'm fighting, so they're not going to spend the money for the medicals. And then on right. Tuesday when I'm supposed to be resting, I'm, I'm all day, I'm going to doctors, getting my CT scan, getting my physical done, um, getting my blood work done and, and everything. And then, um, and then, the, and then the, finally the commission approved it. 
And then there was some issues with the BC commission. So on Wednesday, when I'm supposed to do the weight cut, I'm dealing with the commission. So I, I just never had a day off. And then I did a 16 hour weight cut um, to make the weight uh, for that one. And after the after the um, you know after the weigh-ins and stuff, my fight on my end officially got confirmed three hours before the weigh-ins. Right. So I was just exhausted. I just, I, I was just like I wasn't tired. I, I was just exhausted. So after the fight. I just sat down, like I was running on fumes. I really was, yeah. but like I say, man, I I did I, I did I don't I, it is what it is. I'm happy with it. I got the job done. It's been a year since I fought. Holy fuck, I missed it, man. Oh, yeah. oh, I loved it. I loved it. Every, yeah, everything no, I mean, was you look, awesome. You look so happy. Like it's it's kind of crazy when you look at the the year that you had. I, I mean, you and I, you know, we've kept in touch via social media. I'm always kind of yeah. excited about when your next fight's going to be and wanting to watch it after we did the first episode, which was last April. But you, you're on an eight-fight win streak, and you've had over four cancellations. Like It's almost like you're the king of cancellations with opponents dropping out. Well, I, what is it? Is it like the division, the promotion? Why do you think that's happened to you so many times? Um, I, you know, the what it is, though, we all kind of go through that little bit of that, like, um, dry, dry um, you know, like in your career, something goes wrong. And I, I think that's just mine right now, and I think luck changed. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it does, it's, it's just what it is, man. You always go through some sort of stupidities in your life, whether it's financial one, whether it's a physical one. In this case, for me, it was a mental one. I just had to stay mentally strong. And I, I just, it was fine. I'm like, every time my fight got canceled, everybody's like, I'm like, oh, that sucks. I'm like, yeah, man, but I was forced to be the best version of myself for two months. Why would I be mad at that? It, it, I really was, right? So as a result, I, I grew. I'm a monster. I'm a monster. Yeah. I um I, I really am. I grew all I all I did was train um and 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 just fill my gaps in. I'm telling you I'm I'm a, I'm a big problem. I'm I'm um and even after the fight I I kind of chatted with um a buddy of mine connecting with a UFC manager. Um he he manages a bunch of um b- b- bunch of fights and stuff like that and then and then you know he's like hey I just want you guys to meet he's the one that managed um, my career in the UFC blah 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 right so I just sent my message like hey man I appreciate your time um, I understand where I am you know given my career given my age and stuff I just want you to think of me if there's a replacement if there's a last minute something it doesn't matter I just want you guys to be aware of me um, so if, if you know if you do see a right place to insert me please think of me right um, and they sent me a long message with bad news um, he's like he's like hey man. I, you know, I'm a straight shooter. I want to be honest with every, with you and all that stuff. He's like, um, no organization is going to look at you because your age. He's like, unfortunately, you're stuck on the local scene. Um, I know it's not the news you wanted to hear, but you know, I, I like to be honest with you, right? And then I replied to him, thank you for your honesty. And then all I hear is um, the local scene is stuck with a ranked UFC fighter who's not going anywhere. And right. all I got to do is, is is make enough noise to change your mind. And every yeah. underdog has its moment, and I'm gonna, and I, I can change your mind. I really can make enough noise, do enough damage, and everybody's minds can be changed in an honorable way. So that's it. They're stuck with me. So I got a couple more years left to me. As a result, I need, I need young guys to stay relevant, and they need me to make them authentic. So let's exchange. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got. I, I'm curious your mindset. Like you, from the first time that we talked, you just strike me as someone who's very even keel you have good awareness about the world your place in it and how to interact with it and i wonder through stuff like this i mean it's mentally challenging no matter what kind of person you are to overcome um things that like cancellations last minute weight cuts being told by promotions that you can't be part of it despite an eight fight win streak at your age right how what are you doing on a day-to-day basis to maintain this dehan mindset that keeps you in line, keeps you fighting, and take something like that and not even get battered by it and just go, you know what? In ear, one ear, out the other, I got something to prove and I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. I'm a monster. I, it's, it's not that, man. I, I live the dream. Listen, I, I figured it out. Okay, I figured it out. The secret to life, like this is all I have to do is invest in myself. As a result, the life rewards me. Like I always say to people, um, losers chase, winners attract. Mm. right so if you're chasing everybody's because you have nothing to attract people so you're trying to chase people right successful people lead through their actions as a result they make enough noise to get your attention yeah right so that i figure out man. i just i i just invest in myself it doesn't matter whether i'm a fighter or i don't i wake up i know a certain lifestyle that i want to 
live and I, and I have a certain standard. Like I tell everybody, even when I'm fighting, you have a playful mindset with high standards. That's how you're a good person. How do you look at the next year or so? I mean, you're, you're someone who likes to train. You stay active. You stay fit. You're taking care of your body. You're doing cold therapy. You're, you were just in the sauna. Um, you're around the clock kind of guy. So as you're in these interims, you're waiting for that next opponent to come. You hope that it's an up-and-comer with a good record that you can smash, make more noise. What is your, your training, your teaching, your family? Like, how does that all shape up following something so awesome like this victory? Oh, I, all, nothing changes. All, honestly, it's just the life I live. Like, it's just, it's just what I do. Um, I, don't really, I don't really make any drastic changes. I kind of figure out uh, what a fight camp is. Right, a fight camp is a mindset. Right, that's all it is. You know, when you compete for jujitsu, you're not doing anything different. It's just everything has more weight, everything has more meaning. So it's just a mindset. So the closer I stay in the mindset, the better I'm off. I tell everybody, man, I stayed at 70. On my lazy days, I'm 60, 65. On my hard days, I'm 80, 85. But that's my kind of fluctuation rate. So, um, and that's with everything, with diets, with uh, with going out, with training, with I. I I have a standard and I maintain that at all times. When I have to have a fight camp, I kind of step up to 80, 85. When I'm sore, have bad days or anything, you know, like take some time off, I go to 60s, but there's no days off. It doesn't exist. Right. It does not exist. I love that. I, I wish that, <laughs> I wish there was a way to like effectively communicate that whole mindset to anyone because regulating, we know in strength training, this is very black and white. Regulating your intensity is mandatory or you're not going to get stronger, right? But I think in the, in, whether mixed martial arts, uh, jujitsu, from the hobbyist level to the professional level, this management of output becomes really, really important, not only as you're aging, but just in general. I mean, ha understanding a range allows you to perform better at your peak outputs, right? So yeah. whether that's, again, you're a hobbyist and you're, you're at Universal and you're doing jujitsu classes and this is new to you not going 10 out of 10 every single time allows you to learn. It allows you to see things as they're happening and allows you to develop a relationship with the martial art itself. How long did it take you to begin to understand that? Having been a fighter your entire life? Well, just like, just like any spectrum, you, gotta, you have to do, you got to go both ends, extremists, right? You know what I mean? To kind of find the balance. And, and all this is, what I, this is what I figured out in life. Who cares about your peak? It's about raising your rock bottom. I forgot how many how many quotable things you say. Like, no, but like I have but, to be but, on it. <laughs> no, but but it's it's true. Who like yeah. for example for example like I was like I was chatting with one guy and he's like, hey man, like we're just chatting he, about let's say how often you train, right? He's mm -hmm. like, I train twice a day or whatever. I'm like, who cares how? What's your best? I want to know what your worst like. What's your rock bottom like? It doesn't matter if you go twice a day to the gym, and then you take six months off. It's better to go right. two times a week forever, right? So, so you have to have the ability to raise your rock bottom. And that's all it is. Every, every year since I was a martial arts, when I realized I want to do this for the rest of my life, is I figure out a new piece of it. And that's it. And it's like, you know, first I start off training twice a week, then, then you know, almost every day, then every day, then once, once, once at least a couple of those days a week or twice a day. And now I just figure out my whole lifestyle. I wake up from the moment I go in. It revolves around this. You know, I have a routine. I'll usually wake up 6, 6, 30 in the morning. I'll go get a nice dip. Then I go drive up the street a couple of minutes away. I do a little sauna, yoga class. I'll go teach uh, I'll go teach two classes. In those classes, I'll train. After that, I'll go home. I'll make some food for the first time. I'll take a nap a little bit. Then I'll wake up. I'll go do another little weightlifting. I'll go to the gym, clean the gym, teach from like 4 to 9, for, for like 3, 4 hours teaching the gym. I'll train at night. I go home, make another meal, watch TV for an hour, and go to sleep. That's literally my days. How do you interact with the, the students? How inspiring is it for them when they see someone, I'll say at your age, just to, to clarify the question, even though I personally, I, I think age is kind of hilarious when you look at people like yourself who are, who are still performing. Um, but when you see the younger athletes, it, it has to be really powerful for them to look at the person teaching them and go, damn, this guy's taking care of his body. He is investing in his own health. And he's still, not only is he pushing it and training frequently, he's breaking the mold on what's possible because he's actually in the ring fighting people and coming out victorious. 
that must be really powerful for them to be around. I, if you ask me to toot my own horn, I can never do it. Um, <laughs> so I try. I try no, my best. It's, 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 listen, the, the, the minute you enjoy the smell of your own fart is the minute something goes wrong, <laughs> right? Um, but, 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 but like I tell everybody, I'm confident. I'm not yeah. arrogant. What's the difference between confidence and arrogance? Confidence is based on your abilities. The more you can do, the more confident you are. That's why a 20 year old is not confident. He has that money. He can know, doesn't know what he wants. He's not a confident person. When you base your confidence on self belief, it's called arrogance. It's not based on no real material, right? Mm -hmm. So I can never be cocky. I'm confident, but I work hard for that confidence. That's why I can never tune my own horn. As <laughs> you're asking me to, so I don't know how it feels, man. I just, I just, I, 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 I'm not trying to inspire anybody. I'm just trying to make myself happy. Yeah. Are That's you it. doing a good job of that? No, I don't believe in happy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm a, I'm a bitter man. I'm like, I don't, I have happy moments. I don't believe in happiness. Not surprised. Talk to me a little bit about uh, the cold, cold exposure. Cause I started doing this, uh, seriously about like a year and a half ago. Yep. Major change. Uh, physiologically, I have no idea. You know, whatever the science says, this or that. But the mental work of not wanting to do it every single time I do it. Yeah. Doing it anyway. And then trying to sit with what is pain? Like, what is this feeling that I'm feeling? Why am I even feeling that? And trying to develop a relationship with that to better understand it. It has completely changed my life. And I've actually become, I would say, to some degree, addicted to me it, too. which is hilarious. Because if you asked me to, a year and a half ago, no, I would have been I, like, absolutely not. Same with me. I used to be the, I hated cold showers. Like, hated cold showers. Hated them. Yeah. Hated, like, like. You know, everybody says, bro, but I hate cold. I'm like, me too. So don't give me that sale. Um, right. the, I'm the same way. The only, this is how I look at it. If I don't do it, I'm only mm -hmm. doing it for one reason, because I'm being a bitch. <laughs> because there is, no, there is zero potential of injury. Zero. Yeah. All the benefits and all you're avoiding is discomfort. Now, if that is not a definition yeah. of you're, you're being a little bitch, that's, that's it. So as a result, when I when it crosses my mind, I can't talk myself out of it. What, 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 what you, and, and, and it's right by the gym. It's literally by the gym. Yeah. And it's from the mountains. So the water is a bit colder than the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, and so I, I really like it. It's right there. So I have no excuse. It takes me like eight minutes. I drive. I literally drive for like a minute and a half. I get undressed 45 seconds, do two plunges, two, three minutes, get dressed. I'm back in the gym in 12 minutes. So I have no excuse not to do it. Um, but I, I, I love it for my recovery. I honestly feel it. Um, like when I train almost every day, you know, obviously you get, get lots of lacto acid in my muscles. And it takes me a long time that I feel heavy. Everything feels yeah. heavy as dirt. But once I go hop in there, you just squeeze. I just, I just feel like it squeezes everything out of my muscles. And I get that fresh blood. My recovery is through the roof. And then I just, like I said, I'll usually just drive up to a half an hour uh, in sauna. Once I do those, I have the ability to train every day. It really helps with my recovery and my mobility. I, I was going to say the one thing that stuck out to me the most is not like the, um, obviously the immediate feeling is great, right? You get out, you feel like it's Superman, yeah. but it's the ability to then train hard the next day is it's night and day different. It, I mean, it's completely it's, recovered. Like I could do, you know, if it's, hard sparring and jujitsu and then strength training in the morning and then cold plunge, I could go the next day and do the same exact thing. Whereas in the past you feel you're beat up, you kind of feel tight, yeah. you got to work things out and that's just not there. And then combine that with the sauna and it's a, uh, it's such a magic yeah. potion. Same. And I do lots of yoga. Like I, I'm, I'm huge. Like I'm like the only guy that, that walks outside from yoga being mentally bitter and angry, but physically <laughs> you? at really? all. Oh, <laughs> I have a whole, yeah, we'll, we'll say that for another show, but <laughs> how did, so yeah. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about your relationship with yoga. This is a tough thing. I think for people to find consistency hate, with, yeah. like they'll try it, but they won't make it work into their schedule. I love they'll it. adopt cold and sauna and strength training and maybe a stretch routine, but yoga is so beneficial. Oh, I, 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 I can't live. I love yoga. I started actually long, long time ago. No joke. But back then when it was Bikram yoga. Um, I, oh, yeah. I, I, I started when it was then 26 poses, blah, 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 like, like 15 years ago, I walked in and I, 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 I left, I couldn't do it. 
I, I, I could not believe something like broke me. I couldn't do it. And ever since then, I, I just couldn't leave. Every, I just kept coming back. Took me a handful of them to actually get through. I remember that. And then eventually, I just, anything that breaks me, I, I don't leave it. I get married to it. Yeah. So, so ever, ever since then, I, I love yoga and I, I, I do it for mobility. And the older you get, mobility is your best friend, your worst nightmare. And I'm, and yeah. I'm all about mobility. Especially in a sport where you can get crunched, slammed, picked up, put down, twisted, you know, your hips, for example, like if you're not taking care of your hip mobility, that's your kick, your ability to check a kick, that's your guard, that's retention, that's all this kind of stuff. So if you don't put that on the focus, it's going to go away. Yeah. The mobility doesn't just appear one day. I'm, it goes away year over year over year over year over year. Mobility is a like cardio, hard to get, impossible to maintain. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I know. Yeah, that's what it is. And then the other thing that helped me quite a bit lately is pull ups. I have a couple mm. of um I have a couple of wrestlers that like the that, that means time coming around the gym. Yep. And I started like like last two years or so, like I, I just went kind of psychopath with wrestling. I just they're crazy. I, I love wrestlers. I and then yeah. the only thing that kept teaching me is I wasn't working hard enough. And they kept doing pull ups. And this guy was like, Yeah, I do about hundred pull ups a day. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, I just bang out a couple here, a couple there, a couple here, and it adds up. Then I started doing it. I would do like two, three pull-ups, two, three pull-ups, and like, you know, try to maybe do about like 50% of how many can I make. So for the last six months or so, I've been doing almost about 100 pull-ups a day. Just, and I just do like two, three sets of eight, then one set of 10, then I'll come back to the gym. So they'll add up. To, I don't even feel it. And then everybody. Where do you, where do you feel the, the payoff for that? Like what part of your grappling, your stand-up, your jiu-jitsu do you feel like is – you you get that benefit structure so mm. I'm, I'm always not i'm my structure is always better built than yours now with, with like head your, position, your base yeah my base from the yeah. head position to to shoulders it's just my core and my and my back is so much more stronger it connects to the neck that i and then i i've really ever like my 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 jiu-jitsu game has elevated quite a bit the last two years like significantly so i, I just can't wait to show it off but i also it's so it's one of those aces that I really truly can depend on at the high level I was so I was going to ask you you know in this fight you took a training camp at TriStar right and you're alongside Frost you're in the eyes of one of the greatest mixed martial arts coaches of all time what was the decision to go there and to start training outside of Universal and what was that conversation like with them when you were getting ready to do that well the minute you need to justify whether you should train with Frost a hobby is is a silly argument. So I don't know. It's Frost a hobby. So that's one. Yeah. Do I need to justify the reasonings or anything? Why should I need to go train with the best mind, arguably, like you said, of of of, of Canada? At least I said, put it at least yeah. the most successful, for sure, or the most accomplished and stuff. He's he's he won me the fight. Yeah, I heard you in the interview after talking about your brief conversation with him. You said, hey, back it off. This guy's tough. He's not going to give up. He has a heart of gold. You know, be he smart just, here. He just said, be, but th so uh, do you want me to tell you a couple of incidences in there that he want me to fight? Please. It's, That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, so, so first of all, my whole stand my whole striking lives and dies by the jab. Mm -hmm. Lives and dies by the jab. So. I jab, I jab. I don't know exactly when. I think the beginning of the first, second round, somewhere towards the end of the first round, Frost the Hobby's like, just touch his, touch his forehead. Don't land the jab, touch the forehead. I don't get it. I don't get I really like don't get no it. Like no power. He wants yeah, to just... Yeah, just touch the forehead. Once yeah. in a while, throw the right hand behind, calf kick, don't land, touch the forehead. Mm. I don't have time in my own mind to say yes, no. You got to do. Before we walked out, I go to Frost. I'm like, listen, Frost. Like, me and him became close, and, and, and we chatted. We had moments. I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm coachable. You tell me what to do, I'll do. I'm a good yeah. listener. I won't disappoint you. I'm going to win you the fight. We fist bumped. We're like, let's do this shit, Frost. Let's make some fucking memories. And we won out, literally, right? So I had a good moment. So I saw, so I listened. He says, head kick, I, had, I listen. But I don't have time now to figure out. But I don't get it. So I touch. I touch. No, no, don't lie. Touch. Second round, first round, second round finishes. I'm not asking him why. You know, it gives me other advice, blah, blah, blah. You know, we go round finishes, fight finishes. I want all that stuff. We're going to the back. I'm a frost, man. I got to, like, we got to chat. He's like, he's like, we're like laughing all good. I'm like, 
just so you know, I followed you blindly. What the right. fuck, bro? Like, he's like, oh, he's like, what are you? He's like, yeah, you were telling me don't jab, touch the forehead. He's like, when you were jabbing him, your shoulder was low. When you touched his forehead, you brought your hand back, your shoulder stayed higher. He wasn't able to gonna counter you with it. Wow. Genius. Yeah. And he, so he told me, he's like, we had a similar strategy when uh, Rory McDonald fought, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Jake, Jake wow. Hellenberger. No, Jake Hellenberger. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Jake yeah. Hellenberger had a monster right hand. And he was telling me, uh, Rory McDonald, he's got a long neck. He has a similar stance like you this way. So we were getting him to jab higher just to get him yeah. protected. To see that in real time. Genius. Well, having, so being, being someone who, who coaches and teaches yourself, a seasoned veteran of yeah. martial arts. What makes him so special? What is it about being in that camp, being in the room with him, listening to him that separates his vision from other people? It works. <laughs> but, 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 but if you, you, you know, like, like, there's no mystique to success. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll even give you an, like another one where, where I, like I said, I was running on fumes. I'm running on fumes. He got me one time against the uh, against the cage once, right? And he has yeah. his hand, and he's now he's my base is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So now I'm like, fuck, what do I do? Do I push him down or lift him up, right? So I have a split second. This was second. in the in the third, in the, I in believe. The, I third or second, I don't exactly remember where, but yeah, I'm yeah. I'm tired. If he takes me down, he's a legitimate black belt. I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying you know there's there's red you know alerts are coming, right? Right. And then. I got to make us do a lift or push, lift or push. And then, you know, always happy very fast. And for us, a hobby yells, spread your base and sit down. Spread your base and sit down. I spread by base. I sit down by default. He becomes higher on me. I get, get my, double unders. I get the underhook. I break the position. I win. I think I know exactly what you're talking about because, you, again, like you, like you admit to, there's fatigue, right? It's visual in the body. Yeah. Language. He shoots, he gets, I think he might have even caught you with a He caught like me with the left hook. hook. Left hook, he caught me with the left right? hook. Yeah. You go back, back again, you find the cage, you feel it, you come back out, he shoots, uh, and then you defend it. So it's, it's like, wow, this guy looks tired, he's going to get taken down. Bam, no, I, I guess he's not. And I think that was probably, That was a defining moment in the fight. And that, with for his head, that has to be really demeaning when you, you start to count a guy out and you shoot. And they're still there, yeah, a hundred percent. And 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 that's that was a significant. That's why I said for us, a hobby, want me to fight, and that's like a big lesson even for like students. Listen to your coach, like even with that jab. I don't know why. I don't see the big picture, but yeah. I trust him. And I shut my mouth and I did it. And and like I said, one of the everything in that fight that worked. He told me when he was like when he's rushing you, he's like plan, throw the right hand. I planted. Mm -hmm through the right hand, almost dropped him a couple of times. Like yeah, all he my had stuff. these interesting uh, flurries too, where he was throwing a lot of jumping knees. He yeah. was throwing a lot of four, five piece yeah. combos. When you're when fatigue starts to kick in in these later rounds, yeah. uh, when you're in the in the cage, what? Are you, of course, we like default to our most trained skills, right? That's like when when we're fatigued and tired, you. You go to your, your lowest common denominator of efficiency to stay alive, yeah. so to speak. When you see these combos coming, what are you thinking in that moment? Like, how are you playing through this to not get caught, one, stay focused, and have the wherewithal to see and listen to what your coach is saying to you? Man, who knows? To be, well, it's, it's sort of in who knows. It's, 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 it's one of those everything happens fast, everything happens slow moments, right? And then, mm -hmm. and, then, and then when you hear good advice, you trust good advice, the brain is off. And you hear throw the right hand, you throw the right hand. It's one of yeah. those like he's thinking out loud for you. Um, and and, and you, just risk in, you just risk management under pressure, right? And you, mm -hmm. like I said, you have to trust. And that was like a big, like I said, I put my, I put my trust in him. I truly did, man. We connected. And then the thing with Faraz Sahabi that makes him unique, if you want to follow a general in, in a sense, is he cares. He, mm. he, like, he, actually, he actually cares. Like, he'll, he'll give guys shit in the gym, and he's like, hey, man, he'll tweak in a good way. You know, and I tell all the young fighters in the TriStar that I was there, I'm like, hey, man, you want your coach to yell at you. That right. means he cares. If he never yells, he never fought this, and, and he cares. Like, even 
even when um you know when I like I like yeah, I went there he rolled with me he cornered me in there every time I was outside the ring like in the in the in the cage and try so you know all the all the key guys go there um and I'm not gonna always assume I'm the key guy so I always you know I go in the outside you know I want to earn my way in there I don't want to assume anything right and and I don't want disrespect or or play a bigger role in anybody's team than I wanted. Um, and then they'd always invite me in. He'd invite me. He started coming around me and everything. So he genuinely cares. And and like I said, and it works. <laughs> That's the so key. Did that, did that come about um, you were just showing up for, for training and you developed a relationship with him? Or was this something where you reached out to him and said, hey, I have a fight coming up. I really value your expertise. How did you guys develop that relationship? Well, I, I used to go to TriStar a long, long time ago. Um, mm. I've, I, and... and Back then, when um, it was Ultimate Fighter Canada versus Australia. Oh wow! Yeah, so 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 a bunch of those guys that got signed over there um, with that Ultimate Fighter, um, I was friends with, and I went over there. And as a result, I met a couple of them over there, and I I, I went there several times. Um, and I and you know, then pandemic happened, and I stopped going a couple years before that. Um, and I, you know, I, I stayed friends with some of them, but obviously with, with the bigger guys for us, I mean, not that I was ever close with him to begin with at that time. Um, you know, I, I didn't see any of them and everything. And then not the last training camp, the one before that I went there and it got canceled and I just, most of them remembered me. Some of them, you know, it, it took them a while, you know, to develop it, but I just felt like at home there. I felt yeah. at home and I kept, I kept going again. And then for this one, I, like I felt I, I was there for years. And it just it just fits for me. His style, his approach, his energy, his explanations is it. It just works. It's really special when you see in any sport, but it's especially cool in martial arts when you see that the athlete is really just an extension of the coach's mind. It's like the physical extension, uh, almost like a fight robot that they have in the in the cage that they're controlling. Yeah. And there's this seamless connection where. They say jump, the person says how high. Yeah. And there's no lag, there's no questioning. You see things start to break down when that relationship's become asymmetrical or oh. they start to doubt the person that's that's calling it out. But when they're aligned, like oh. even uh, like Sean Strickland and Eric Nixick sometimes, yeah. the way they connect, it's like, yeah. whoa, it's almost like Nixick's in there well, fighting you, this other guy. You know what I say? I have the feelings, a fighter has mm -hmm. the feeling coach has the eye now, if my feeling matches his eye magic happens totally right because but that's a humble that's how you know i don't think that everyone embodies that in any sport in a uh -uh. lot of sports the ego is too big the the self-aggrandizement is too big and they they think that they're more important than than the coach and it's not that one is or isn't it's that together they work that's how sport works yeah. well even e even if even if you place 10 percent the role even if you take the like like two screws off the car the car falls you know there totally. the, the, you know what i'm trying to say so it's perfection happens because every single hair is needed everything is needed that's why it's perfect the minute you take it out I'm not saying he can't be a good coach you can be a successful fighter just magic doesn't happen right were you surprised with the unanimous decision in the fight? In what way? You're so at the, when you're both standing there, the body language that you had didn't look like you were a hundred percent convinced that you had won. Oh, and I then won. when they no. when they say unanimous, fight. you celebrate. Oh, I was happy that I won. No, I I, I honestly I thought I, I I thought I won the fight. You you don't win the fight moving backwards. Um, Fact. He won. Um, face wise, damage wise, I did more damage. Um, I, I, I'm more efficient. Everything was a sniper. I did. I chewed up his leg. I did the body shots. I stopped his takedowns. Um, not saying he didn't land anything. I'm just saying he threw 12 punches and not one would land clean. Not even one. Yeah. Right. Listen, I'm not saying like I, I'm just saying through my eyes, they're all 50 to 60% on my end. Um, right. uh, that, that's how I feel hundred percent. Like, I don't care. I don't care that you out of desperation throw a 10 punch combo swinging in the air because I get you against the fence <laughs> for 30 seconds. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's silly. Yeah. It's silly. Yeah. Right? And then, and then it's, it's just, then I throw a right hand, you staggered, I chase you for 30 seconds, and then out of desperation, you throw another, and then oh, I, I, I win. Well, you don't, actually. You don't win. You don't get to dictate by shitty output. You get to dictate right. by damage, by control. If, if, who was he controlled that fight at all times? I was. Who was more? Right. Who was waiting to get hurt? He was. Like so, there was not one moment 
where he dictated things. I backed off the fence at some points, and and I will come. He runs again, so no, I I I, I won that fight from every aspect. Now I'm I you know just because. I'm good, and everybody thinks I should put guys away. But listen, man, that guy's a 29 fight veteran. Yeah. With with a winning record, you do anything 29 times at the highest levels, you're going to be good at it. He's got punching power. He didn't have to do anything to make the weight cut. I'm risking it all as well. He he loses. You expect to lose, right? For for my end was like it's not if he's going to win. How is he going to win? Right. Right. So this, it, there was this uh, one moment in the third where you do catch him and it showed a power asymmetry that when you landed, the landed punches were more impactful. He, yeah, he uh, got you with that, the hook at the end and it staggered a you a little bit. Oh, it's a fight, of course. Exactly. exactly oh my, Jesus, but it's a fuck. Fight. Yeah, of course. Not saying, not saying, oh, like, like this guy, like, no, it's a fight. I mean, he, yeah, he did hit, he landed some low kicks. He did, I'm just saying, overall, my, like you said, my punches did more damage. End of that. Right. Do you ever feel tempted to showcase jujitsu uh, just to do it in those moments? No. I mean, I'm not. You I'm, like you? You I, prefer I just, the stance? It's just how my brain thinks. My yeah. brain calculates and operates. In um, listen, if, if I'm forced and then I'll do it, it's just instinctually. Um, mm-hmm. I it's just it's, it's just my comfort and. You got to force me to step outside my comfort zone. I don't do anything voluntarily in your benefits. Now that's now I wrestle and do jujitsu like an at like, like like a starving dog. So when I go into a fight, <laughs> I don't have to do wrestling and jujitsu. That's why I tell everybody I wrestle. I don't want to wrestle so badly that I'm going to do everything and wrestle outside of the fight. That's how much I wrestle, but that's how I look at it. I mean, that approach makes so much sense to me because you can't deny the work ethic of wrestlers, right? Like the, some of these guys, it's just, oh. it's different, man. Like even, and again, out of respect, this is a completely different yeah. level, right? As someone who enjoys training and likes to train, I love when I go in there and there's collegiate wrestlers that are back for the summer because they just kick my ass, dude. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. matter. I, the yeah. belt level doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like they are a, a, a white belt collegiate wrestler yeah. and I am just, destroyed and i'm not an incapable person right I'm, yeah i'm training constantly i run I, I i keep my body active i sleep i do all the things yeah and there's something different it's this unwillingness to accept bad positions whereas in jujitsu you well, can you, be taught well, to take the bad position but jujitsu you're taught to make a living in a bad position right that's what that's to my hey man if you get in a bad position this is what you do in, in wrestling is, I'm going to teach you everything, stay away. Wrestling is prevention, in a yes. sense, of bad positions. And jiu-jitsu is your insurance policy, if you, if, <laughs> if you need me. <laughs> so then you have these two, and then it's like, let, well, then let's stand, right? Have these in the tank if you need them. Yeah. Should it go that way? Yeah. I, I, just, I liked, you, yeah. you likened it uh, the first time that we spoke to having a conversation. Yeah. You're like, I like, I'm having a conversation with you, you know, and I yeah. think that that's such an interesting and cool way of looking at a fight because it shows the art part of it. Well, you that's know, what like, yeah, it's, it's a are... debate. It's a debate. I'm debating. That's what, yes. Yeah. Like, that's what you call it's it. It's a debate. Like when I'm in there, I was really debating him. I'm debating. Here's my, what's your counter argument? What's your, yeah. w- let's have a debate. And that's, um, that's how I look at it. Right. So, cause it, then it's fueled by logic, intelligence, right? Arguments are, they're, 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 they're emotions. They're, they're, we're yelling at each other. I don't want to yell. I want to debate. And if you're yelling, you're losing control. So yelling becomes predictable. Debate becomes clever. What does your wrestling training look like? And and is that mostly done at Universal, or was that partially done at TriStar as well? Well, everywhere, everywhere. I, I just wrestle every day. Yeah, I'm wrestling in the supermarket. I just, I, no, no, but I mean, like, 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 it's just part of my training. Like, not one yeah. day it doesn't go that I'm not. And 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 I got lucky. Um, I got a couple of really high, like high high level wrestlers like um, the, um, there's one Iranian guy Anavid who's been like ranked like you know top five in the world I don't know exactly Jeez. like he's fen- like like Asian Pan Am like I don't know those type but he's phenomenally accomplished wrestler and that one's uh, the other one is um, also Palani um, he he tried out for the Olympics um, his his girlfriend just made the Olympics team for Canada. Yeah. Um, and his girlfriend um, is um, is is sister of Lupi, the one that fights in UFC. Oh yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, so it's uh, so, 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 so 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 you have some good wrestlers to train with. Yeah, and then and then and then and then there's also Colin Dales as well that used to train before he was an Olympic wrestler. Um, so 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 I've got the chance to 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 come across and just appreciate the sport and the mindset. And and right now that's I I I'm, I have a wrestler's mindset with the with with with, with striking. With the the training where it's at right now and your your skill set having developed over the course of your whole career, I know I think I know somewhat of the answer to this, but how do you continue to improve? What area of your game do you feel like can still evolve and really start to do exactly what you said and make noise and say, uh, Hey, I know you guys don't want to hear me, but I'm here and you need to put me in your promotion because I'm the kind of guy that's gonna get it done. Uh, well, what what it, has to change? Yeah, nothing. Well, when I say with improvement, okay, there, there's two ways to improve, okay? Add new skills or make existing ones better. And I'm just, I'm, I'm on this path where I, I, I'm set in ways of who I am. You know what I mean? I, I have a certain jab, a certain cross. I have certain ways to set it up. I have my, I, I, have, I developed a style for jiu-jitsu that wants to get it to my end of getting back up. If I'm on the top, I'm a monster on top. So my style of jiu-jitsu is, is top heavy, how to keep you down. So right now, my job is just to sharpen those tools. So I throw 200 right hands, 500 jabs. That's it. Now it just becomes about efficiency. I don't need to develop seven jabs. I should have one deadly that I will land it. Not every time, but I mean like, and th so that's one, that's one thing when it comes to striking that I, I approach. Like every sport to me has like an identity. Like for example, boxing is perfection, mm. right? Kickboxing, um, aggression, Muay Thai, controlled violence. You know what I mean? Like jiu-jitsu creativity. Like, for example, like um, wrestling efficient power. Yeah, definitely. Right? So, and then, so that's why, I, so when, I, when I'm striking and I have a box in my it's perfection. So I'm not trying to add 12 different hooks. I'm just trying to make my hook to an uppercut to a body perfect. Right. And that's all it is. Now I'm motivated by perfection of all my skills. Sharp, 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 sharp. So every day. I got to make it tighter, sharper, smoother, and more efficient. I love the endless, the endless pursuit of perfection, knowing that it doesn't exist, but at least striving for that. Kind Fuck, of... Why not? How dare you not? Yeah. Seriously. How I... dare you not? In any endeavor, not just in fighting, yeah. but why not put forth your absolute, your absolute best? Because yeah. And, and, you might and, not have the opportunity and, to and try best again. Doesn't mean, like, but, but best doesn't mean always work. Just best sometimes wasting a full day of doing nothing in the park. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, one thing I just found that like the biggest thing you have to find out, are you busy or are you productive? Very different things. Once you Very understand different the things. difference between busyness and productivity, then you actually know if you're doing anything with your time and how, how wisely it's being used. And that's one thing every year I figure out more ways to be be efficient uh, um, and, and be productive and that just means with quality doesn't mean like i wake up and i i, I don't have a schedule i have no no obligations no anything right and and i tell everybody i'm a boss in life right? i think a lot of people struggle too because they conflate busyness and multitasking yeah. with being productive and that's not the case like if you if you're doing uh, 30, 30 seconds of jiu-jitsu and 30 seconds of boxing and then 30 seconds, you're being inefficient. You're yeah. doing something that doesn't serve you. Or if you wake up and you're taking a call and doing a dog walk, put the phone away. Just walk the dog. Yeah. You might get more out of just doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and everybody's doing so many things and this, it's like, everybody's just busy, busy. I, I talk to everybody, same as like, you know what I'm laughing at too, right? Like, like now everybody's laughing that their food is so expensive, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Food is so expensive. We can't afford to eat. But at the same time, obesity is going up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how can starvation? Somebody's the, eaten. How, how can starvation or obesity like go up at the same time? Shouldn't they counterbalance each other? Like, <laughs> no. well, and the other thing is, some things are more expensive. Yeah. But if you're willing, like, you can eat healthy on yeah. a relatively inexpensive budget you can't yeah. and because people do it all the time you yeah. just have to be selective and creative in the ways that you do it you don't have How, to be do you no focus? you don't i i, I cook ahead. every day i cook every day irritate you don't have to be creative you don't have to do anything you just all you gotta do is buy good quality food i got zero creativity okay i buy a good steak good ground beef here's my i, I have burgers like three times a week 
I got my good bur burger. I pl put it there. I flip it, put some salt, bun, cheese, avocado, <laughs> and it's like the best burger ever. It's not creativity. It's quality. The but this comes from a guy who I think you ate um, <laughs> boiled pigeon in rainwater. <laughs> yeah, and burger's a lot better. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, but I'm like, it's just quality, quality, quality. Yeah. I, and, 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 and that's what it comes down to. Man. Like, if you have good quality, the more ingredients you need, the shittier the food is. <laughs> I think that the more, just in general, like, I, I find that the more active that you are by default. So, if you're up, go on a walk, go to training you know, go to sauna, get back to training, cold plunge, back to training, go on a run. Of course, not every person in the world can do this because they have jobs, yep. families, whatever. But when you do that, your food kind of chooses itself because one, there's not unlimited windows with which you can eat. And two, I don't want to eat shit food because I, I want to train no. tomorrow at 6 a.m. Exactly. Yeah. I, I say, yeah, I, I, I can't do it. But I grew I was lucky, man. Um, I have your typical Lisa and your peer mom. Uh, she, we, she, I, she never had McDonald's here. She has her own garden in the yeah. back. My dad makes Perfect. prosciutto. My dad makes smoked meat prosciutto. So he makes his own wine. He makes, uh, we have like, a, a, everything is homemade. My mom made like homemade bread, homemade mayo. She made cheese. Like we're very that Eastern European, um, I mean, uh, upbringings. And that's how I grew up. Yeah. So when I moved out, I'm like, I, I haven't had fast food in like 15 years. No joke. I haven't had McDonald's. I love it. I, I just, there's nothing about it that you can't, you can't give me shit and tell me it's steak. I don't care how no. much you deep fry it. I know what no, it is. It, I just, and your body, when you're like that, your body becomes internally aware. You know, like if oh. I, if we, if we gave you some, you'd feel like shit. You'd feel so bad, dude. Yeah, I could, <laughs> but, but I eat everything. I have my ice cream, I have my chocolates. Yeah. I have my, I just don't go to Dairy Queen. I'll get it. Right. Like I just, I just, I just enjoy, enjoy life on a quality level. I just don't do things just to like stuff my face. With, so I want to ask you about age, yeah. age and sport, yeah. let alone age and a sport where you punch people in the face yeah. for a living and you get punched in return. Right. Yeah. I've had this conversation with several different people, some of which have, have utilized performance enhancing drugs. Some have a hard line in the sand about it. And as we get older, the temptation to maintain your current output at the level that you're used to, which is your whole adolescence, upbringing, 20s, yeah. et cetera, uh, is there. And I'm sure in this sport, especially because of the, the potential for injury, the potential to get hurt, and your livelihood yeah. is on the line, is there ever a temptation for you to use uh, TRT, PEDs, well, anything to assist in recovery and i think i know but i want to know yeah well no I'm, I'm first i'm not against it. i always joke around like i don't not take steroids for ethical reasons just financial wait until i retire me so so i'm like like i for sure if i could yeah. afford gh and like thousand dollars a month oh i'd be spending three what's it right. called so I, I i i you know what i mean I, and it's just yeah. like but i and once i retire once i get like up past 25 i definitely will i want to get on trt um, I listen to all the all the all the benefits and all that stuff, and I, I definitely see it. Um, and I swear to God, every every year I think um, my body is gonna go down, and I'm a, and every year I'm like, since I was 35, this is my last year, this is my last year, this is my last year, because I'm like, hey man, because I I freak out sometimes because I'm like, hey, I'm like, I still feel youthful, right? So yeah, yeah. So, so as I, I do, and what I'm doing right now, it's working. As a result, I have no temptations. Um, or like to, and I'm, and I'm not smart. I don't know anything. I don't do, I don't do proteins. I don't, I don't know any of that. Like I just don't, I'm just used to eating well, um, training and being an idiot in every other aspect. So <laughs> how old are you now? 39. 39. Yeah. See, so I talked to Wagner was like very transparent about it. He's like, yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been taking TRT and I'm competing with 23 year olds every day. You know, he's like, what do you want me to do? Uh, and I, I have had personally from the sports that I played growing up a very hard line in the sand and a no remorse for uh, people that use them. But it wasn't a sport where I was getting punched while I was doing it. Right. So it's I, a little ignorant of me to have too many feelings about the lifestyle choices of fighters because it's a different ball game. Nothing is fair. Nothing is fair in life. I don't care. I don't care. Like nothing bothers me. It, it's, it's, yeah. We all struggle with our own fucking way of success. Some people need men. So, because, okay, if, if that guy can't, if that guy is physically weak and he takes steroids, 
That guy is mentally weak. How come he can have a psychological coach? Right. You know what I mean? It's like we all deal with mental physics. We're, we're all figuring this shit out, right? I don't care. Not, nothing nothing bugs me. You know, like, I, I, you just don't, right? Um, so I'm like, I, I've never had a strong opinion on steroids. I never had a small one. I'm like, I don't care. I understand both ends. I know some guys, fuck you. I'm like, yeah, I can see that argument. Some guys, like, I don't give a shit, man. That guy's six foot six. For like, nature's unfair. Give me this shit. Right. Ah, I can see that argument too. So I'm like, you know what I mean? And, and I'll tell you, I'll probably if I'm like a 25, 30 year old stud with a six pack, I'm like, fuck steroids. Then, I'm if, then if I'm like a 45 year old guy right. having a hard time getting off the bed, you don't know what it's like. Give me steroids. So it's, a, it's an opinion from perspectives. Yeah, and this is not a sport that lends itself to being very nice as you get older. It's it's harder and harder. But you can't take the like you can take the fighter out of the fight, but you can't take the fight out of the fighter. You know, you you forever you will engage with this in some capacity, I'm sure, because oh, it's yeah. so much a part of who you are. It's 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 the cheapest therapy in life. I tell everybody it costs hundred and fifty dollars an hour to talk to a therapist or two hundred bucks a month unlimited therapy. Jiu Jitsu is the cheapest therapy you'll get best I, and it's the most honest one that. and it's the most yeah. honest one too so it's yeah i'll do definitely you, be a part of my life do you see yourself in the short term here do you see yourself staying in in samurai or, or bfl or is this kind of a, a back and forth whatever opponent is ready to go in either I one have, it seems uh, like you have a good relationship with both now a hundred percent um well i mean obviously i like to go back to bfl uh fight now you know it is my hometown i i, I and i've been with bfl for so long um, and it's just nice, man. It's nice of the conveniences. I'm like, oh, because my first 11 pro fights before it was sanctioned in Vancouver, I was on the road. Oh, right? That's horrible. And yeah. then and then back then, you know, you're in three-star hotels. There's no way to wake up. You got a bus. You got to figure things. You're doing it on yes. a budget. So it's a nightmare. Um, and then and then now in BFL, you know, it's it's, it's in my city. I, I have a system. I have a routine. It's, it's, it's much easier, right? So even when I went to the to Montreal and stuff, I'm like, man, I'm, I was weight cutting in here, so it's like, I didn't, I, 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 I want to fight for BFL be, for those reasons, but also it's my hometown. I love it here. I love it here. So, I. If so, I are can, you at this point? Is it a, a double champ across two promotions? Then, right? If you, I have no clue. I have, I have no clue. I don't ask questions. I mean, they gave you a belt. No, they gave me a BFL belt. Oh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. I was like, damn, no. dude, he just got another no. belt in no. another promotion. No. No, 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 no. It was um. They gave me the, they gave me the BFL belt, and then Maxime, who's fighting on BFL, he's the main event. It was his belt because he was in the audience. Okay, that would all <laughs> make sense now. I was, yeah, that was I clearly was a little bit. Confused. Yeah, I, I was surprised too that they brought. I, I can't. He, he gave me a. I don't, there was a reason for it. He said it. I smiled, nodded, and uh. But yeah, that's how the belt came up. It was Maxime's by um um belt. Because uh, he was there doing some interviews, you know, hyping up his fight, which is the next week in BFL. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that was your first time fighting in Montreal in a oh, while. Oh, yeah. Huh? Well, ever. What did that feel? That's, I mean, that's a, dude, that's a hub of martial arts hub. Just lore, right? Hub. It was awesome. It was awesome. Um, even even, even the, the, the fight before, like, you, you, you heard how much the crowd was going crazy on, the, on yeah. the fight card and everything. And it was so funny because I was, so just to give you some back funny uh, story, so the commission in, in Quebec, they don't they, they don't they never give you your gloves until you walk into the cage. So, so you walk out with just your wrap with my hand from wraps. the locker room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then we're so so we're in there. We go upstairs. We go around this system, and you go in the back now where the curtains are, right? And they have the production um, interview room, and they have you know like screens and blah blah blah. And there's a table of commission. So you're going to go in there and get your gloves. But as I'm walking, my opponent is there getting his gloves. <laughs> so it's like, hey, man, hey. We, like, fist bumped each other, and they're like, we're getting our gloves now, right? So, and then they had you there a fight before. So when, when the fifth fight started, that was us in the back. So I warmed up, walked over there. Now I'm in the back. It's cold. It's like a warehouse. So now me and him are warming up there for, like, 20 minutes, not looking at each other, looking at each other, like in the same proximity right before we're going to walk out. So that was a funny moment oh. back there. <laughs> That's, I mean, you got to just keep the blinders on, right? You stay focused, yeah. you focus on your coach and you just, it's That's a, it. yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
overall, what was what would you say aside from being in Montreal, but the two different promotions? Is there anything noticeably different about? changing uh, promotions like that other than the sequence of events that they do leading up to something no to be honest no i've i fought for many of them and they're all they're all the same it's all a mess when i say a mess i don't mean like mess nobody knows what they're doing you know it just happens fast right every in the back you know in the backs and all that stuff um for the wanes is all the same it's a mess usually when i'm waiting for the fights i sleep i'm known yeah. for napping i just pass out <laughs> oh i am dead to the world like Dead to the world. There's one picture of the so BFL. Wild. I just pass out. Like I snore. I like even early when I had more hair, my hair was always messed up when I would walk to the cage because I would just wake up like 40 minutes before the fight, like all confused. So yeah, I, I, I just sleep. I sleep in the Well, there's some, maybe, maybe there's some arguable physiological benefit there. I mean, like 20 minute naps that could be really restorative. So maybe sure. it's your body giving sure. yourself an extra little. Sure. Plug-in. Sure. My body's so aware. Of all the audiences yeah. and all, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I just, I just, I'm just relaxed. I just put my headphones in. Everybody is like, ah, I just came my moment. I just pass, take naps and relax. <laughs> so funny. My the first jujitsu tournament I ever did, my teammate and my buddy was there, and uh, we were both. I was a little bit heavier than him, but we were going about the same time. We were sitting yeah, in the yeah. stands, and I'm like, t- I'm doing like mobility exercises. <laughs> you know, I'm like hydrating. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. Like, doing stretches, leg swings. I'm just getting a feel for what's about to go down. I'm trying to like calm my nerves and I look over and he's got both hands like this and he's sitting in bleachers, not even on the ground. Yeah, he's yeah. sitting in bleachers <laughs> with legs crossed he's <laughs> like this. And I'm just, like, oh. yo, Kyle, wake up. I'm like, you're going to, f- you're fighting like 15 minutes. And he's like, oh, okay. It puts his gi on, goes ways in and gets over there. And I'm like, yeah. man, how does he do that? Yeah, but folks. different strokes for different folks, right? I mean, hey, man, for us in Eastern Europe, it's always like, don't show emotion. Don't show emotion. Right. Stay relaxed. Stay calm. Don't show. Like, every game you play as a kid, don't flinch. Don't show. Like, that's how we grew up. <laughs> we came all here. Just a bunch of, like, savages came here, like, from <laughs> war. I remember, like, dudes were, like, 15 years old with facial hair, like, six foot eight in, in, in high schools, <laughs> right? It's like, so everything. And we just grew up that way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, as we, you know, we just learned to be more calmer. And, and even if you're not, nobody cares. So, they would say, nobody cares. Yeah. Go. So yeah, that was the uh, different approaches. Do you guys have any fighters from Universal coming up with? Bounce? We do, uh, we do, we do. We, um, the guy said that on a Aso Panali, he's fighting on BFL. Um, he's making his pro debut. Um, I got another another kid, Ryan. Um, he's two and zero as an amateur. This is um, well, w- w- um, this is his third fight. So nice. um, I I got I got I got a couple. I got one female. Um, I got lucky with um, um, Mel. Uh, Zebraman, she's she was she was from Australia, but then she lived in Thailand. I mean, she was from Australia, then she moved to Thailand. She she spent a couple of years in Tiger, and then um, she came over here with her husband, mm-hmm. and and we clicked. And sh- um, she's 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 gonna be a monster like that. She's one with the work ethic, coachability, um, uh, how built physically she is, uh, mentally tough. She had a couple of injuries at a young age. She overcame. She's only twenty five. Um, she's going to be next big one. Um, I, I, got, I got one, Mauricius. He's two and zero in MMA. He's Brazilian. He fights like a Pereira. I say, like same. I love he's it. got the. He's got the. Yeah. Like he's he's good, but I always make fun of him. He's got the. He's got Brazilian cardio and a Brazilian way to make weight, which he never <laughs> makes weight. <laughs> uh, what when you're in a. In a mixed martial arts academy, I asked uh, Nacheli de Jesus this the other day, and she, she's a, a jiu-jitsu competitor, right, yeah. renowned from Brazil. Yeah. And I was asking her, as she's transitioned more towards motherhood and being a, a leader within her academy and, and now guiding other athletes, and I'll pose the same question to you. What is it that you're looking for when you're assessing a big group of people? Right? You get people from all walks of life in a mixed martial arts gym. Some mm-hmm. just want to learn to protect themselves. Some want to be the next UFC fighter. Some of them are unsure, but it's healthy and they vibe with it. And it's yeah. a good mix. What is that characteristic that you look for in, a, in an athlete? And you go, you know what? I think with the right coaching and the right willingness to be coached, this person has that thing. Yeah. What do I look for? How do you yeah. how do you take care of things you love? My Nurture job. Them. No, no, no. How does he take care of things he loves? Oh, my oh. Jo- yeah. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. job is to make you fall in love with martial arts. And how you conduct yourself toward things you love is depends how successful you will be in that field. I cannot all I can get mm-hmm. as a coach is quantity. Throw more, throw more, throw more. Quality comes from within. 
I cannot sew. My job is to make you fall in love with martial arts and shape you to be a better character as a person. With good characters, you build good skills. That's it. But beyond that, I can't push nobody. It's your dreams, like we said last time. I, I don't push. I develop. You push. Now I can inspire through my actions to show you what I've done, how hard I work to gain the success that I have. Now, if you want to surpass me, work harder. If you work less, don't complain. That's what I tell them. That's beautiful and truthful. Uh, do you ever get someone who comes to you and says, Dan, I, I want to be, I want to fight pro. I'm ready. I want to be that guy. Like, a, you know, what, what do I got to do? And you go, you know, <laughs> here, step in the ring. <laughs> we'll put a timer on there. What, what's yeah. that first? Like, are you a throw them to the wolves? approach no. is that dependent on the person depends on the person depends on the attitude depends um it, it's it, it, it all you know what i mean it's 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 it, it's everybody comes for martial arts for different reasons some for confidence some for anger mm -hmm. management and some because they're lost you know what i mean some needs love yeah. and some needs structure uh one approach doesn't doesn't solve everything and i always say one ingredient doesn't make a good meal right so I don't know. You know what I mean? Just, you just, yeah. you, 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 like I say, man, my, 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 and, and I love everybody. I don't care about fighters. It's, it's, I, I don't have that gym just to make a world champion. I don't, I don't need to have a world champion to need to, to eat well and be happy. Yeah. I, I really don't. I just love martial arts. I love what it, how it develops people. I have a unique way and a unique skill to shape people's mind to be better people through martial arts. And that's it. When the, when the beginner comes to my, I love teaching beginner classes. I, I, I still you know, people ask me, can I teach in your school? Like, like, you know, I you know, like sometimes fighters, if you have any time I can teach in your gym, I'm like, you guys don't get it. I love what I do. I'm not looking to, to, to develop black belts. So I can only teach once a week, you know, um, um, and, and, and that's one thing. And when I, when I've been traveling around, from Drysdale to Farasa Hobby, even when I went to James McSwaney and all that stuff, it's shockingly how often they train. They're yeah. not, the, all those greats who are amazing teachers, very successful schools, and amazing martial artists, that's all they do. Like, when I'm in Tristar, Farasa Hobby is there in the morning, there at night, and he rolls, he's, and he's hands-on. He's not even like yeah. on his cell phone, like, and, and that, he loves it, and that's me, I love it. Um, so I'm, I, I'm there all the time. I'm curious um, because you, you each time I talk to you, it's it's very apparent that you have a, you have like an understanding and appreciation of of life that is very content. You don't strike me as someone who's like um, fighting to find meaning and purpose in what you're doing, or, or wishing that you had more than you have, or uh, clamoring for materialistic things to prove that what you've done is worth it. There's a very clear uh, just part about you that, that you understand it. You're at ease. You're content with where your life is at. W but that doesn't mean that you're lazy about where it's at. You're driving and you're, and you're working hard to better other people and better yourself and pursue things. I feel like people struggle with this so much in life is feeling like they need to be at a certain level. I need to get this house to be happy. I need to drive that car to be happy or I need to be making more money than I am. And sometimes what happens is that thing that they think that they want comes to them. And when it happens, they don't appreciate it and they, they can't accept it because it's settling, right? They're accepting less than their potential. What do you say to this problem? Because it doesn't seem like it's befallen you. <laughs> what? I, I, I see myself as equals everybody else. So not nobody intimidates me. I don't intimidate anybody else. Even when I go to TriStar, when I go, I swear to God, I don't sit with Faraz a hobby as a fan. I sit as one of them. I view myself as one of them. Now, whether he does or doesn't agree with that, that's fine. So I'm going to change your mind through work ethic and heart and, 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 and dedication and stuff like that. So that's all it was, man. I just, um, I, 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 I know my worth. Right? I'm, yeah. I'm nobody's fan and nobody owns me. That's why I tell everybody, why am I boss in life? I'm not a boss in life because I tell people what to do. A manager tells people what to do. I'm a boss because nobody tells me what to do. 
right? And 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 and, and not, not not in an ignorant way. I'm just being in like a in a humble way, like you know. You, you, yeah. And and I don't have nothing to prove to anybody but myself. And my my struggle really is within myself um, to to be the best version that I can. And that's it, man. I I I live a simple simple life that's dedicated and motivated by hard work, and uh, and goals in mind. And that's it. Keep things simple. Well, it's it's motivating to hear, and it's something that I. <laughs> I aim to emulate. I, I think I find happiness in, in some of the strangest moments, like the last 20 seconds of an ice cold shower that uh, those moments were like, Hey, this is kind of all you need. Yeah. Well, what's <laughs> I'm the, happy right now. Why am I uh, happy right now? This is enough. Well, I say, what's the, what's the, what's the easiest thing to draw a straight line? What's the hardest thing to learn how to draw a straight line? What's the easiest thing to do? Live a simple life. What's the hardest thing to learn? <laughs> How to live a simple life. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, so true. It's so true. Man. There's so much that's right in front of us all the time. Ah, it is man. enough. Ah. It's enough. You See, know? I, I love the numbness of everyday life. I just fucking love it. I, 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 I truly do. I, 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 I love ordinary. I, I find joy in ordinary. I, I find so much joy in ordinary from people, from buildings to me. I just, I, I, I just love ordinary. It's just it's it's what so do you, what, do you, what do you think that's from where does that come from because it's beautiful it's just yeah. i don't know it's just it, it's 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 i just i just enjoy life i enjoy life in every aspect from the highest to low. i just do I, I i love small things i love handshakes i love i love coffees i love i love i love, I love bumping shoulders with somebody and apologize i just love everything <laughs> i just i just like little shit little shit just yeah. just interaction with existence and life just fascinates me in every aspect i get to do it all the time I love it. I love. I love driving by the water. I. I just. I. I love everything. I really do, man. I. I find peace. The fact that I can do that every day. I don't. I. I. I my God. My God. It's. 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 It's fascinates me. Fascinates me. It makes me happy. It just. Life. I like. I like ordinary. <laughs> well, it's contagious, man. I, you know, when I get done talking with you, and it's reasonable, we'll continue to do this. But when I get done, I. I feel. I feel some of that. You know, it's. It's. Thanks, man. It's great. It's good to be. It's the the. One of the reasons I love martial arts is the opportunity to find yourself near people that have that energy that you just talked about. It's unique, and it, I think it stems from this humbling nature of what martial arts is in the first place. It's going to challenge who you think you think you are, yeah. always. Whether yeah. you're a pro fighter uh, in the beginning of their career, the twilight of their career, a hobbyist, it will be something that challenges what you think of yourself yeah, just by what it is that's it just forces you to to view yourself from a different perspective right and in the beginning it's from a victim <laughs> what is your ideal because you said this and I, I so i just took 30 days and didn't drink oh. any caffeine which was the craziest thing i've ever done in my life yeah, Very stupid, yeah. not okay. recommended um Why? i'm back on the Why? horse i love it oh, uh, dude, to challenge myself the western purely. people the, the western people how they get to kicks through through life of torture hey, it's, it's like a cold uh, it's like jumping in the cold river same it thing no, it's like it's, it's fun, i don't like depending <laughs> on things right so yeah. anyway i ditch it for 30 days uh i just had my first cup last week oh incredible right i yeah. love coffee yeah. what is your ideal coffee setup how do you do your coffee oh i have so i have a car i have a coffee machine here um make my coffee in the morning i play chess every day that's my morning routine Every, uh, again, like online or online? Oh, I'm a serious chess player. Like, oh, we I'm gotta not, play chess. Oh, we gotta your, play. Oh, my ranking is like close to like sixteen hundred at the. At not the even. Clear. You will. You will. Oh, I, obliterate I, me. I, I but I chess, like the challenge. Yeah. I, I learned chess from my grandma. I mean, grandpa uh, in these back then, long time ago, and then I played with my dad. And yeah, chess has been part of my. I, I've been playing chess since kid. Um, oh, you're gonna destroy me. This will be great. It'll make, I tell, it'll make I me tell everybody in the gym, whoever beats me in chess gets a shirt or a free private. I have a chess <laughs> board. Yeah, anytime you anybody wants to challenge, come by the gym. Um, watch I go broke, bunch of chess masters. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was like, there goes all your shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, that. That's an awesome way though to get the day going. A little bit yeah. of challenge of the mental. Uh, that's coffee. my um, so if you ever meet me in the morning and I, and I'm pissed off or like well with the woman she's like I'm fucking she's like you lose just my fucking law ah, ruins my morning for a couple of like I'm mad. Well I have one goal going yeah. forward for twenty twenty four. Yeah. And that is to ruin Dayon's day. Perfect. Via chess. Via chess. From the from the United <laughs> States. <laughs> I'll never be welcome in Canada again. Ever. Ever. Yeah. 
Well, Dan, it's been, it's always such a pleasure talking to you, man. I, I really mean it when I say like the, the energy, the mindset, it's contagious. I, whenever I speak to people that are nearing the end of 30, I just turned 35 myself. I get super inspired because you guys are breaking the mold of how we think about age and what we think we're capable of. And it makes me excited about getting older and not feeling like I got to give up, you know, like I okay. by no means would, but oh. it's awesome to see yeah. someone like yourself step in there lose an opponent, get another one, go in, get the job done, and then be even keel and humble about it the next day. It's awesome to be able to sit down and talk to you. I, I'm very grateful. Thank you, brother. Appreciate your time, man. More than you think, always. Thanks, Absolutely. Brother. We'll do it again. Hey, friends. Abe here. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode and sticking around to the very end. If you want to support it, leave a five-star review on Spotify or check out www.mainideapodcast.com join the mailing list, and stay up to date on all things The Main Idea, from future guests, sponsorship opportunities, products that I'm using to help me perform at my best, invites to ask me anything, and any upcoming pertinent information to the show. I cannot do this show without you. It is literally why I show up each week and put these episodes together. So thank you from the bottom of my heart from being part of the community. I hope you have a great day.